Our product is a factories that move to the construction site and using local material and local labor, begin to produce this kit of parts, deliver it on site and assemble it on site. And that's why each factory can produce roughly a house per day. I have a physicist background. I'm, I'm an engineer. I spend all my life just to take the hardware deep tech startups and help them to grow from idea to mass production. And that's why I begin to do the biggest project in my life in Kubi. Right now, one of the main problem in the construction globally is that there is no skilled labor. Plus the cost of the construction is so high now, the people can afford even low quality building now. In the US, 70% of the cost of one square foot, it's a labor plus subcontractors. 70% it's materials. The market in construction is huge. It's roughly only in the US, it's trillion dollar. If you come up something and you begin to produce, you will not affect on the market at all because it's so huge. You need to come up with the idea how you will scale and you will give the ability to others using your idea and your technology to impact on the market. There is a saying that if your goal is just to earn money, you shouldn't have a goal to earn money. <laughs> if you have a goal to build a lot of houses, you shouldn't have a goal to build the houses. You should have a goal to build the factories that will build the houses. Our principle is the same as in automotive industry. The car manufacturer produces all of the process of assembling the car. It consists of already pre-produced kit of parts. We use penalized system just to produce kit of parts and with this kit of parts, assemble the building. But to produce this kit of parts, there is no exist on the market machines that you can take, that you can buy and begin to produce. That's why we should design and to produce also these machines that will produce kit of parts that will assemble the building. This is roughly, you know, what we do. Welcome to our R&D center. Here I will show you all the magic with mechanical, electronical and software stuff that is doing there. Here you can see that mechanical engineering is sitting there. They're doing all of this magic with, uh, with the 3D model, with the software, and then we are producing the machines and designing machines and producing kit of parts here and so on. This is a uh, technological guys who is doing the software for the CNC machines. Here it's our R&D center. And here we produce all the machines for our factories. We have different type of bending system, welding system, cutting system. Because the Kubi itself, it's like a mix between Starbucks and, and IKEA. With the Starbucks like a processes and with IKEA with the kit of parts that you can assemble the building. But to produce it, we need to produce and to design our own machines because it's not exist in the market. And here we designed it to produce these machines. We are using this inflated building. It's also part of our, of our technology. We rent a parking lot. You can see that it's a parking lot. Put the cupola here, put all the machines there. The engineering is sitting just next to the manufacturing and we need it because when you come up something, you 100% you will make a lot of mistakes. And uh, as fast as possible, you need to check that you did this mistake. That's why when the engineers come up something, we need to produce it and do another iteration. Well, I want to show you our technology. We call it V1 or the single family one or two stories building. And using this kit of parts, we can build different shape and different height of the building. And the factory produce everything, starting from foundation and interior, exterior finishes, everything without any subcontractors. It's a thick window, high ceiling. This is one of the material we call it aluminum composite. We use them just to cover the wall in the in, in, in toilets instead of tiles. And uh, you can clean it very, very easy. We have roughly more than 20 pattern solutions. And one of them, for example, this is a exterior facade. This is a magnetic facade that you can change yourself without help of professionals. Now, let's go and show you V2 technology for the multi-stories building. The difference between them is that we use the concrete within the multi-stories building. Let's come in. This is my dog. This is how the, the technology internally is looked like. The grid is 10 feet and 20 feet. Based on this grid, we can build the buildings with different size, different height, and so on. For example, it's magnetic wallpaper. If you want, you can use it. And, uh, and for sure, there is a traditional stuff. For example, this is a sheetrock. 
Well, this is one of the building under the construction. Let's go, I'll show you. This is the building itself. And uh, here we use the standard technology. It's a sheetrock that we cover the building. And you can see that we produce this panel we printed uh, on, in the factory, and it's helped to assemble it without unskilled labor. Ah, this is uh, toolboxes. All necessary tools that the guys need to, to exact stage that they're using now. For example, it's toolbox number two and toolbox number four for interior finishes. This is a testing factory where we produce a kit of parts. Here in this building, we are producing everything related to windows. Glass panes, we cut the glass here. We produce double and triple pane glass. We cut the profile, we assemble it here. This is the rotation table that help us to do that. Roll the machine, where we roll the light gauge steel in different parts of interior and exterior finishes. And then go to another building. Each of them have manufacturing flow and each of them produce different type of, of exterior and interior finishes. Here it's a steel manufacturer and also the steel. For example, this one we're producing the decking. This is a bending machine. It's a welding robots. This is a screw pile manufacturer. The cooling itself, by the manufacturing conveyor approach, we can design and we can assemble the buildings and the price of the building is two times less than the standard construction. We are reducing by the manufacturing conveyor approach, reducing labor force more than 10 times. That's why we reduce the self cost of construction two times and decrease dramatically time of assembly. When I wake up in the morning, I feel myself happy because I like to go to, to my job and I know that I'm doing that stuff that I like. And when I saw new and new machines and new and new buildings that were built, I feel myself that I changed something in this world and it, it, realistically I begin to help people to provide to them the buildings with lower costs and with higher quality and each day to, to make additional and additional step to that. They know that my, my dream is that people need to buy the house as easiest as buy a car. And that's why after the several factories that we will have in the US, we will begin to change the market in this area where the customer will see that buying the building, buying the house should be so easy as buy the car. This episode was the first of a few things Firstly, it was the first ever international non-US based episode. Secondly, this is the first ever remote shot episode, which is super cool. Alex, the other co-founder of QB, who will be in a future episode, hired a camera crew to film remotely. I woke up at 4.30 and Google meeted into a wireless uh, feed on the camera and directed the episode over Google Meet across the other side of the earth. You could see sometimes that Ali has an AirPod in his ear, and but that's because he's talking to me and I'm asking him questions and, and giving a bit of direction. That alone is like a pretty cool testament to how amazing technology is, I think. QB is amazing because of how quickly they've moved with pretty small amount of capital. When you have a big problem like housing and you have a ton of different people and companies trying to solve it, it's cool to see different takes on the same problem. Then you have Kubi, which is actually trying to take the factory itself and create kind of a stripped down mobile mini factory, as they call it, put it near the job site and build within a, a radius of that factory. I think a lot of times you think factory and you think, well, you can't just make factories and pop them all everywhere, which, well, kind of can. It's very hard. There are other companies doing this, but it's super inspiring to see because it's a very first principle, fundamental approach. Like, okay, the problem is the manufacturing production. What if we move it to where we're trying to build the houses? So thank you to Alex and Ali for wanting to do S3 so much that you're willing to hire a camera crew and work with me to film and do this remote. So cool. I mean, using technology to enable the storytelling of technology. Man, YouTube has really been starting to take off. It's really cool to see. Uh, we're getting a ton of subscribers and the algorithm is clearly picking us up, which is awesome. So if you're new here, uh, hi, thanks for watching. I make mini documentaries on startups trying to change the world every single week. As always, thank you for watching and until next week, keep on building the future.